The grand prismatic hot spring and other features are kept boiling thanks to new seismic investigations of the magma under the Yellowstone supervolcano. Scientists now know that there is more liquid magma under the Yellowstone supervolcano than previously believed. It is now obvious that the Yellowstone volcano, the world's largest, is finally erupting. But do you have to panic? Well, not until you watch this video. Let's explore how the world's largest volcano is planting the fear that it will erupt soon. Watch till the end to ascertain the fate of Yellowstone Volcano. What you should know about Yellowstone's supervolcano and its surroundings. In Wyoming, it's difficult to overlook the natural forces that have formed the breathtaking open arena that locals value and tourists come to see. This is particularly evident at Yellowstone National Park, where geysers, hot springs, and other hydrothermal phenomena serve as focal points for active geologic processes. This is a dynamic, ever-changing environment because the same forces that produced Yellowstone's breathtaking grandeur are still at work now. Visitors to Wyoming are aware of this fact, and many often inquire about the geologic dangers that Yellowstone may provide such as the possibility of a volcanic explosion. Understanding Yellowstone's geology background and history is necessary to comprehend the park's actual dangers. By doing this, you will be able to appreciate this unique scenery even more. The Yellowstone Volcanic History Yellowstone is one of the biggest active volcanic systems in the world. Its history started 16 and a half million years ago when Southeast Oregon as it is now, was located above a hotspot, which was a vast plume of hot material rising from the Earth's mantle. Around this period, the North American plate began to drift southwards at a rate of roughly two inches per year over the immobile hotspot, beginning the first of a series of catastrophic volcanic eruptions that would move northeast. The low-lying Snake River Plain in southern Idaho was left in its wake when the plate passed over the hotspot. The three most recent eruptions in this succession are seen in the rocks of Yellowstone, which is now located directly above the hotspot. These are the supervolcano eruptions of Yellowstone that have become well known in popular culture. When referring to Yellowstone, scientists use the term caldera system, since supervolcano is unnecessarily simple and the biggest eruptions only cover a small portion of the geologic history. These three eruptions produced large amounts of pyroclastic material and covered most of Western North America in ash, making them genuinely cataclysmic occurrences. Geologists utilize the massive calderas that were created by each of these eruptions as evidence to put together the region's volcanic history. Calderas are produced when magma is released from a subterranean reservoir and the Earth collapses inward. We can determine the ages of Yellowstone's three caldera-forming eruptions by dating ash deposits and other rocks. These eruptions took place at 2.1 million, 1.3 million and 631,000 years ago. The initial eruption produced the most volcanic material, releasing 588 cubic miles. The 30 by 45 mile wide Yellowstone caldera, elements of which can be seen in the park today, was created by the most recent eruption. Importantly, a period of lesser eruptions that primarily took the form of slow moving lava flows occurred before and after each of these caldera forming events, some of which were similar to the lava flows in the Hawaiian Islands today. For instance, after the last caldera forming eruption, there have been around 80 comparatively calm eruptions, the most recent of which occurred about 70,000 years ago. The science behind Yellowstone's hydrothermal features. Geologists can now see the magma chamber under Yellowstone in a manner akin to a CT scan of the body. However, they employ tiny deliberate dynamite explosions and seismic waves from earthquakes in place of x-rays. Only 10 to 30% of the magma chamber's top is genuinely molten, according to these 3D photos. The remaining rock is partly hardened, but is still very hot. The magma chamber's top 
lies only a few kilometers below the surface. The well-known hydrothermal characteristics of Yellowstone are the results of this subsurface heat source. Deep, thick brine, salt water, heated by the magma chamber, then radiates heat to circulate groundwater, replenished by surface level precipitation and snowmelt. This groundwater may get overheated and surpass the boiling point of water at the Earth's surface due to the pressure of the rock above it. It may flash to steam when the pressure drops and the superheated water rises through cracks, expanding quickly and ejecting the water above it as a geyser. More often, the overheated water gradually cools and bubbles up to the surface as a hot spring. Looking beneath the Yellowstone, scientists utilize data gained from the velocity of various kinds of seismic waves as they move through the Earth to look under the surface. When searching for melt seismic waves known as S waves are very helpful since they significantly slow down when they come into contact with any liquid, including water or molten lava. Researchers calculate the amount of melted magma by comparing the time it takes an S wave to travel from a transmitting source to a receiver to the time it takes other seismic wave types that don't slow down in liquids. But waves really radiate outward rather than moving in a straight path. They distort. They may curve around a subsurface obstacle rather than ram through it if it might slow them down. These extra wave motions enhance the image with a great deal of fine detail, but they also demand a lot of processing resources. Why there's no need to panic that Yellowstone may see another supervolcano. The exceedingly improbable threat of another catastrophic caldera forming eruption attracts a lot of tourists. It is useful to once again analyze the complete range of volcanic activity in Yellowstone to see why a catastrophic eruption is improbable over the periods that matter to people. In contrast to the enormous caldera forming eruptions, most of Yellowstone's volcanism has taken the form of smaller eruptions, mostly quiet lava flows, which occurred over hundreds of thousands of years and generated the rock blocks that make up a significant section of the park. With this in mind, it is far more probable that should Yellowstone undergo fresh volcanic activity, it would take the form of a lava flow, potentially accompanied by light ashfall, as opposed to a caldera forming eruption. A lava flow would have an impact, but it wouldn't have much of an impact outside of the park, which is quite different from the global disaster that popular culture frequently associated with a Yellowstone eruption. Here are some more reasons why another catastrophic caldera forming eruption is improbable in the next few thousand years. In addition to the fact that the biggest eruptions are exceedingly uncommon and account for a very tiny portion of the overall volcanic activity that has occurred in Yellowstone. Not enough magma is available. There is some doubt among scientists as to whether Yellowstone will ever see another caldera forming eruption. This is partially because there isn't a lot of fluid magma in the underground reservoir, maybe not enough to support a significant eruption. The technology presents no indicators. Seismometers, GPS and temperature sensors are used to closely monitor Yellowstone for volcanic activity. The monitoring data do not indicate a significant eruption anytime soon. Intense earthquake swarms, ground fracture, major surface uplift and a surge in gas emissions with shifting chemical composition are all precursor indications for a massive eruption and would all be seen at levels considerably higher than we now experience. There are undoubtedly many earthquakes, uplift and subsidence events, and gas venting that take place now and will continue to do so in the future. However, this kind of activity is thought to be common for caldera systems across the world. Thus, Yellowstone's continued breathing does not portend a forthcoming eruption. Volcanic eruptions do not happen at a predicted time. Finally, against common belief, a caldera forming eruption at Yellowstone is not overdue since the components that create them, a buildup of magma and pressure in the subsurface, don't happen at consistent rates, volcanic eruptions tend to cluster in time and don't have regular recurrence intervals. 
Even if these systems did exhibit regular recurrence, it is not statistically significant to estimate an average interval from only three occurrences. When considered together, the likelihood of a subsequent Yellowstone caldera forming eruption is astronomically unlikely and below the level of interest required for hazard assessments. Indeed, Yellowstone's geology and dangers are more intricate and far more fascinating than merely a sporadic cataclysmic eruption. One of the biggest volcanic systems in the world is shown in Yellowstone by its breathtaking beauty and distinctive hydrothermal characteristics. This system is always changing since the terrain is still being altered by the geologic processes that occurred 16 and a half million years ago. Is Yellowstone simmering? Yellowstone may spend considerable sections of its life cycle with larger melt percentages than imagined, according to Maguire, which is an intriguing consequence. This defies the conventional wisdom that the magma chambers of a volcano are typically filled with cooled crystals and interrupted by sudden injections of magma before an eruption. Instead, Yellowstone could just be boiling for a very long time. But a bit of simmering is a far cry from about to erupt, Poland says. And these new findings help to drive home the point that this system is mostly solid. That's probably why it hasn't erupted even small amounts of magma in nearly 70,000 years. That doesn't mean Yellowstone is quiescent. It's still a hot, active volcanic system with hazards, Poland notes. For example, in recent decades, there have been deadly steam explosions and landslide triggering earthquakes. Those more likely hazards don't get as much attention as fears of catastrophic eruption. It's kind of a bogeyman for people and a clickbait topic. And it's sad, Poland says. It's an interesting place that has so much to offer and people are focused on the things that won't happen in our lifetime. That's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. Your likes and subscription to our channel is one way we'll know you appreciate what we're doing. Please keep it coming. We'd also like to know about your thoughts and feelings over this looming dreadful volcanic eruption. Feel free to drop your comments below in the box provided.